The overwhelming judgment of science tells us that climate change is real, that human activities are fueling that change, and we must take action to avoid the most devastating consequences of climate change. Global warming, climate change. This problem goes by many names, but one thing is certain, it is hurting our planet. Well, so the changes that are happening in the polar regions seem to be quite far away and we might, might, might wonder whether those really have an effect on us here in the United States. And actually they do. Um, the first thing is that the, the state of Alaska is actually part of that is above the Arctic Circle. So there are many uh, citizens of the United States who actually live um, in the Arctic region. Uh, but more than that, the changes that are happening in the polar regions are actually transferred to uh, the rest of the world. And as these changes become more obvious, awareness increases. But unless action is taken, the problem will only worsen. Unfortunately, not everyone believes there is a problem to fix. And the percentage of Democrats convinced of global climate change went from 83% in March up to 87% amid the high heat and drought of the summer of 2012. And even among Republicans, the number of believers who acknowledged that climate change was real went from 45% to 53%. The party whose hallmark in Congress is denial of climate change. And there's many people in Congress, particularly Republicans, who think that we don't have the luxury right now with the economy the way it is to kind of close down coal-fired power plants that are, that are still working and that are keeping, you know, they heat our schools or they cool our schools depending on the time of year. They keep the lights on and they think that that's more important because that is what people need right now. But global warming is an issue that desperately needs to be addressed. Rising sea levels will affect the United States as well as every other country in the world. Over the last 100 years, the sea level has risen by about 20 centimetres um, and we expect it to actually um, uh, accelerate over the next 100 years. So green uh, sorry, sea level rise may continue to rise by 40 to 60 centimetres over the next 100 years. Now that will primarily impact coastal regions. Um, so the coastal areas around the United States could be impacted by sea level rise. And so if you go out around the Chesapeake Bay, you'll find that communities are flooding or farmers are finding that, that salt water is intruding on their fields a row or two a year. So a lot of facts. Uh, the other one is going to be extreme weather. It's more drenching rains. That's being seen on all the continents of the world, that if you warm the world, you evaporate more moisture, you put more water vapor in the atmosphere, and that's the energy that drives storms. And so then when you get rain occurring, you get these flooding rains, and they can cause a lot of problems. So the sea level rise, um, that's exactly right. There's been an acceleration in sea level rise over the last few decades, um, and there are a number of reasons why this is happening. The primary reason is that the Earth is getting warmer, and as we warm up the atmosphere, we also warm up the ocean. And when you warm the ocean, it actually expands. Well, when you talk about climate change, we start as if the global climate is changing. So it starts to the globe and work down. But when you talk about impacts, it usually occurs and starts at a local level. And so it's what, how's it gonna affect you or how's it gonna affect your community or your state or your region. And so each region around the country is different. So in the 1990s, we did the first uh, assessment, a sort of scientific report of impacts around the United States. And we divided the United States into 20 different regions and we held workshops in those regions and we had them each think about what the most important issues were. Um, it turned out the one that was common among all of them was water. What's gonna happen to water resources? But it was very different if you were talking about what was gonna happen to water in the Pacific Northwest where it's very wet or down in Texas along the Rio Grande Basin where it's very dry. In the dry area, they're concerned about are you going to have enough water? In the, in the very wet ones, they're concerned about, well, is it going to come as rain instead of snow? Or are we going to get downpours that cause floods? And then other people are saying, well, no, we need to worry about this. 
uh, because this obviously is a global problem. And the, the flip side of that is if we do something here in you know, Silver Spring, Maryland, or even in the United States, that's one thing. But global warming by its nature is global. So that includes China, includes India, and other major countries that have increasing levels of pollution and development. And so it's, even if we do something here, it may not be enough to help globally. The world has suffered many effects of climate change, especially sea level rise. This animated sequence shows what would happen if all of the ice in Antarctica and Greenland melted, causing the sea levels to rise by 230 feet. So for example, one of the things that's happening right now is an increase in sea level rise, um, where the melting of the Greenland ice sheet is actually contributing to sea level going up. And of course that will have an impact um, all around the coastlines of the United States. The long-term effects of climate change can be disastrous. Congress needs to address this issue immediately because if we delay any longer, there might not be enough left of the world to save.